Welcome to the Grad Life Podcast, where we're talking about all things grad. I'm Rami. And I'm Jess. Today, we're talking about the graduate student experience from start to finish with two current grad students. All right, let's get into it. Today, we have two fabulous young ladies with us, whoop, whoop. Victoria and Nellie. Why don't we get a little background information on who you guys are? Yeah, I can go first. So my name is Victoria, and I'm currently a master's student in our sport business program at Newman University. And I'm Nellie, and I'm a current master's student in the clinical and mental health counseling program here at Newman. All right. Well, since you guys are like, this episode's more pertaining to the student experience of sorts, I feel like Rami, like you naturally have to introduce yourselves and what program Again? you're in right now. Yeah. All right. Well, my name is Rami. I'm in the doctor of physical therapy program here at Newman. All right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we got, and I'm a former grad student, so we got some grad student got experience a diverse going on here. population yeah. here. <laughs> we'll love that. All right. So my first question to you guys is can you tell me something that you learned that you can tell other prospective students to save them time and stress as they're thinking about applying to grad schools? Yeah, I mean, I can go into this. I definitely say use your network. Mm -hmm. When I was first applying to grad school and figuring out where, like, where I wanted to go with, like, in terms of, like, degree and, like, the school, like, actual location, I immediately reached out to people in my network. I was talking to my advisors. I was talking to people in the business school. I was talking to people that I interned with that went to master's school. I was talking to people that were going through the process themselves. There's so many people, and I know like people talk about LinkedIn all the time, yeah. and everyone's probably tired of hearing LinkedIn. Never. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's definitely useful, and I, a lot more people will sit down with you and talk about it with you than you think. So I think you, utilizing your network and getting other people's perspectives, like you don't want like other people to tune out ultimately what you wanna do, and I think there's like a fine balance there. But you definitely want to see what other people have gone through because I know for me, I'm a first gen student. So I applied to my undergrad completely blind and I kind of learned from that experience. I was like, okay, let me talk to more people. And I think I ended up making an even better choice for me, like in my master's program because of that. Nice. And you even have like your mom going to like the same school as you too. Yeah, you no, it's weird. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> it's, it's cool, but it's weird. We've learned a lot on this like journey here. Nice. Well, for me, I was going to say the exact same thing. So it's really, really good to communicate, but also to do your own research. I know, you know, parents will give you schools, prospective schools, or maybe you'll see some in school that your teachers give you. But you doing your own research and going on those websites and really seeing if you would like that, um, that certain program, um, looking at the curriculums and going on tours, even for a master's program, it, it, I believe that it's important to go to tours, orientation, maybe even an open house. You know, I really, what I like about our two guests today is that they have totally different backgrounds as far as like Victoria, you came to the same school as your undergraduate school. So like, how was that for you? like? Did you do anything different than a student would if they decided to go to another school? Yeah, I'd say so. So first, because like I went here, I didn't really do any open houses. I did do information sessions mm -hmm. and I actually talked with um, the head of our program before I even was like, OK, like I'm definitely submitting my application. So I want to say it was about like maybe two and a half semesters out from graduating, like about midterms time. And uh, I met up with her and I was like, hey, um, like I'm really thinking about grad school. I was looking into it a little bit and she was, I had a lot of room, like I only had 12 credits mm -hmm. and I kind of wanted to take more classes. And she was like, well, why don't you try um, a class? Like, you know, just take one class, see how you liked it. I ended up loving it and I kept continuing. Um, so I ended, up, I ended up taking four graduate classes as an undergrad before I even started yeah. officially as a master's student. And I think like that was a big benefit for me because I went here and I knew the people to talk to. But I think too, like 
being able to go to the same school like Newman or was not the only school I was considering Mm -hmm. I was considering other schools as well I just you know talking to the program advisor and I being able to like connect with the professors Mm -hmm. the way I was I think that helped me a lot yeah Uh, what I will say is like I'm looking into like going to doctorate school now yeah and I am starting to do like you know the open houses again and like a lot more information sessions because a lot of the schools that I'm looking at like I really not that I don't know them, like I know of them, but like mm-hmm. I, I don't know their culture. So this has been helping a lot. So I'm kind of going into that world now a little bit. That's huge. I th- it's so important for grad students or undergrad students, I should say, to keep an open mind with that stuff. Like you were still considering other schools other than the school that you were currently going to. But you got like a huge jump start because you were able to take courses at an undergraduate level and you were taking graduate courses. So that's something that like I think all undergraduate students should like be aware of and look out for. Ask those questions to your advisor like, hey, is there an opportunity for me to take a grad course here to kind of get a jump start if you do somewhat plan to go to your your the graduate school that you want to go to, but it's also your undergraduate school. And the best part side. was, was that like, I wasn't even a sport management major. I was mm. a business admin major at a minor yeah. in accounting. So when I went to like the head of this program, I was just like, hey, I'm really interested in sports. I played sports my whole life. And, you know, I'm, I'm personally very passionate about like community relations. And they had a lot of courses that would help with that. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I totally thought the answer was going to be no. Ended up being like, oh, yeah, like totally. Like yeah. that's not a problem at all. So I definitely think that for people like you might get more yeses than you think. You just kind of got to keep trying and, you know, mm-hmm. throwing that ball against the wall until it hits something, right? Definitely. I love that analogy, too. You're a sport <laughs> business manager. Yeah. <laughs> I try. <laughs> so, Nellie, you went to a different undergrad than you did grad. Could you just explain that process for you, your experience with that? Um, well, for me, I graduated from Westchester, and uh, I was looking for um, a smaller school, a more intimate program where I would – have a more connection, a stronger connection with the professor. Mm -hmm. If I were to have a problem, they would know my name at least. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, the application process for this, going from a different school to here, this is a private school. So I was more attentive, I think, to the process. Mm -hmm. Um, And also it was a different process because there was a um, interview Mm-hmm. In this process, which which also um, boosted my esteem to want to go to this school, and um, when I did come and I visited the school, I loved it. You know, I loved the the energy that that it brings and everything. And the like I said, I did my research on the different programs and the curriculums that they uh, that they offer. Completely, completely fell in love. Even though I went to um, a different school as well, as well to to visit mm-hmm. and to look at their program. I just felt like this one was a, a better fit based on what what I wanted to go into. See, that's like a really important thing. As someone who's applying to grad school, you have to learn to do the research yourself because you're in grad school, you're an adult, you're going to have to do all that work yourself anyway. Yeah. Yes. Right? So going further into that, how did you guys keep track of all the required materials needed for each program that you applied to because obviously each school might have different uh requirements some might require more than others so how did you guys find a good balance of uh i don't know how to phrase it but you guys know what i'm trying to say no 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 definitely (laughs) yeah communication is the first key so when i was looking at grad school i kind of put it in like three buckets i was like first i need obviously i need to have the program that i want to do And that way, like, I'm doing something that I'm passionate about because if I'm going to grad school, like, I'm not going to go to grad school to something, like, I don't care about it all. So I made sure that the schools had what I wanted and the courses lined up. And then the second thing was the financial piece. Um, I mentioned I was a uh, first-generation student. So I... Yeah, woo! (laughs) So I I pay attention to the FAFSA uh, probably more than some people think. So that that process for me was a little bit different, like switching into grad school. So I looked into that. I looked into opportunities, which I'm also a graduate assistant at Newman as well. Um, And when I was looking at schools, I was looking for opportunities to be able to have it, like, you know, at least somewhat funded. Mm -hmm. 
And then the third bucket was like my application requirements. So I know for me, I had to have two letters of recommendation. I had to submit an essay. And then because I went to the same undergrad as um, school as my master's program, I, you guys already have my transcripts. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, if, if I were going to a different school and I'm like seeing that process now, you know, you have to, you know, request to have your transcripts sent. And that's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. And I think when I started this process, like I sat down with my advisor and I was like, like my undergraduate advisor was like, this is what I wanna do. Where do I go from here? And I kind of, it's funny, I have like an Excel sheet that I'm using again now. And here comes um, the Excel sheets and the word sheets again. There's a whole <laughs> running joke with me and Jess about this. I feel very passionately Opposed. I am just so glad that you are pro Excel sheet over here. Today. Sorry to ruin your flow. No, it's okay. Right no, 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 you're good. Dude. I mean, my major is literally Excel. Like yes. what I went to Gosh. undergrad for is pretty much Excel. <laughs> but um, no, I have like an Excel spreadsheet. And what I'll do is I'll be like, these are like the like sit. Let's I'll just say like six as a number. These are the six schools I'm applying for. And then I'll have like little side things. Um, that'll be like labels of being like, you know, essay due by this time, references mm -hmm. due by this time. And um, I'd actually like, keep all my information in there. And like I have certain formulas in there that generate things for me. So if I put it in one, it generates on multiple tabs. I You, you look like so disappointed <laughs> in me. Um, I'm just like really overwhelmed at this point. Like I'm trying to imagine this yeah, happening. Yeah, my experience isn't that analytical. Uh, I just I'm, I'm very detail oriented. <laughs> And I also have a huge planner, so if anyone ever sees me, I have like a giant book <laughs> and I have it all in there. Um, but I'd say like communication and planning are definitely the most important thing of keeping track because I mean, for my my masters, mm -hmm. it's the requirements were not as bad, but like looking at doctorate school now, I'm like, wow, yes. this is a lot. <laughs> like, yeah. So just keep that in mind and definitely keep track of the deadlines and the a admissions team at wherever you're looking is going to help you. That's their job. Mm -hmm. So whoop, whoop. They'll, they'll <laughs> shout, shout out to Jess. <laughs> we love you, Jess. Oh. But yeah, they will definitely, they will stay on top of you. Like at, um, in my experience anyway, like they will reach out to you and be like, hey, like, are you submitting this? Like, this is where this is. And if they, you have any questions, like they're more than happy to answer. So definitely use those admissions teams as well. Don't view them as annoying. They're just there to help you put, yes, put your Yes, our phone calls are not to annoy you. <laughs> <laughs> They're just there to pull your applications forward as right. much as you think we're annoying you. You applied to grad school, you want to get into a program, so let us help you. Exactly. Now well, you want to share? Um, for me, for you. I, I feel like I did put things in categories as well. Um, when I was doing my research, looking for a program that I wanted to go into, first of all, in the schools that offered that program, and um, the different requirements for the applications, and then I, I looked to see if there were similarities in the application process for different applications to see if I needed multiple things, smart, you know, smart. before <laughs> yeah. just, you know, going one or two times, have to pay a lot. Right, right. right. <laughs> But um, yeah, I think communication, because I really did go go to your orientations. OK, it's important. Like like Victoria said, admissions is there to help. You know, if you have a question about your application process, if there's something on the application that you don't understand or something that you just weren't aware of before, you know, admissions is there to help. And research i'm gonna say it over and over again you have to do your own research because then you'll get into a program and the title may not match the curriculum that you expected yeah mm -hmm. that's a good one so uh, you have to be very knowledgeable of what you're going into because then you got to change change programs or maybe you even lose motivation at all to start mm -hmm. school mm -hmm. yeah so. And that school may have another program that you may be thinking about, right? right? Yes. Like, there might be like something you're really interested in and you're like, oh, the curriculum isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. And then maybe go check out some of the other programs that that right. specific school has to offer. And if not, then move on to the next school. But be Excel open list. to change your your view on things mm -hmm. based in, like don't base your your um decision just on the title of the program. Right. 
You have to look deeper than that. Yeah. So as you guys were applying to grad schools, did you guys use a like central, uh, centralized application service at all, or was it directly to a school? I did them directly through the school. So like, I, yes. um, I, I think, oh, I'm trying to think. I think I applied to four or five, and I did them all individually. I, I didn't really look to see if there was a centralized um, option, mm-hmm. only because I kind of figured out early on where I ultimately wanted to go. Mm-hmm. Um, because like I had taken classes here already and I kind of was familiar with the program. So I, you know, if that's out there, I'd love that. <laughs> yeah, I had no clue. Yeah. Uh, so, I had no so, clue about uh, any of that. So, so centralized uh. applications are like, just for anyone who doesn't know, it's like the common app, but for graduate school. school. So I know someone who can really shed good light on this, and that's Rami. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, Rami. Uh. So physical therapy. PT mm. Cast. PT mm. Cast. They have a centralized application that students can apply through. So, Rami, do you want to talk about that experience? Uh, so I think it's a great idea, but it also has its pros and cons. There are so many schools you can look into on PTCast because they're all listed there that accept the application. Each school might have separate requirements. They might have an additional essay. They might have additional classes you might have to take. That's why research is so important that when you go on to a school that you're looking at to know what they require and whether you use Excel sheets, you might use Word docs, you have a big planner, whatever works for you to get your thoughts organized great i don't recommend going on ptcast and then just like picking different schools i suggest you just go onto google and look at the programs that you want to apply to first make a list of those schools go on their websites to see what they use for applications because some of them still aren't on ptcast and some of them like when i applied to school like half the schools i applied to weren't on ptcast yet Mm -hmm. and now they are um i don't understand the whole supplemental uh, applications that some schools ask for because in addition to doing PTCAS and paying their fee, you have to pay for a fee for that school as well on their supplemental which is a whole other application by itself which is really frustrating and I think that's a con um, but overall it's a really nice streamlined, efficient way of applying to different schools because once you have all your information in that could just be sent to all the schools you're applying to unless they have specific uh, questions in addition to the regular PTCAS application. I'm not the best fan of PTCAS, but that was like three years ago. But it's evolved. Yeah, <laughs> it's evolved. I don't know what it looks like now. I don't want to look back at it because <laughs> memories. Uh, it's a good idea, but I'm not a fan at the moment. I think that's really good perspective that you guys both or all bring on is like how it is apply- applying to a school directly, how it is applying to a school that you're sending one application in for a bunch of different schools. So, I mean, like Rami said, there's definitely pros and cons to it. Um, I think the pro is that it probably saves some time yeah. when you're doing it through, like, a centralized application. But then maybe one of the cons is, like, there's different requirements for each school. So you end up having to add more information in any way to these different schools. And it also feels like PTCAS is its own entity. Mm-hmm. And that if I want to get more impl- um, information about a certain school I'm applying to... I completely forget that there's still a graduate admissions office. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So mm-hmm. I just go through PTCAS, and then they're like, oh, I suggest you contact their graduate admissions <laughs> office for more information. But then I'm like, how am I supposed to add it onto here? Because I need it on PTCAS. I can't individually send it to the school, because I had a problem with that for like three different schools. Yeah. And it's, it's also... not helpful. It wastes so much time. The time that you make up saving by going through PTCAS is, is taken away from you because you're trying to figure out where to send all the supplemental information that you need. I think that brings it back to the point that both Victoria and Nellie mentioned too, is like seek out information from the admissions office directly. Don't forget that all schools should have an admissions office that you can talk to and ask these detailed questions and clarification and whatnot. It just sometimes just takes a simple question and you're gonna get the answer to it. So, and be able to figure it out regardless if you're doing through a centralized application or through directly through the school right so outside of that though right 
you have the graduate admissions office that you can go or the graduate department, like program directors and faculty members. You have those people that you can go to to ask questions. But where are you going to find the unbiased answers that you might be looking for about mm. a graduate program? I and I guess this goes back to when I said, like, use your network. Mm -hmm. I went to people who have done the program. I went to people who, now, this isn't specific to any school. Mm -hmm. um, I went to people who did programs I was looking at. I went to people that dropped out of those programs. Oh, wow. I really went into it. Um, one Actually, one of my classmates for one of my first classes here in, in the graduate program when I was an undergrad had dropped out of a program I was looking at. And because of what she was telling me, and then I looked at, um, like, I had spoke to another person, and I'm like, okay, well, there's a trend here. So I ended up, like, stopping that application because I was like, yeah. well, if I, like, you know, now I'm meeting two, and I know, like, two can be such a small number, but that's, like, two people, and, you know, within, like, less than, a, like, a month, I'd say, mm -hmm. that have been like, hey, like, I went there, I absolutely did not like it, like, and, and like they ended up like pulling out and like one person ended up in my class another person like went to school somewhere else yeah but um i i really tried to get a bunch of people's perspectives and now that i'm looking at doctor school because like doctor school is like kind of different yeah like, um I t i've been talking to people that have their doctorates specifically in what i'm looking into mm -hmm. i've also just talked to people who like went about like you know like getting like their phd in general maybe it's mm -hmm. not like the same thing as what i'm looking into um, and I've talked to people who have dropped out of it too. Um, I, I don't think anybody can give a truly unbiased opinion, mm -hmm. especially depending on like how close they are to the source. Yeah. But I think like mixing up who you're talking to is definitely important because if I talk to people who all graduated from the same program that I'm currently in, well, of course they're gonna say they probably had a good time here yeah. because they stayed and completed their degree. So that's why I was like, hey, let me like diversify who I'm talking to. Some of the people I talked to, they were just business professionals. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, I'm really interested in entering the sports world. What do you think I, you know, like, do you think this is beneficial for me? And they were like, yeah, like we see a trend in people getting their masters and like pursuing a higher degree because as things become more complicated in the business world, like you need more education to back that up. Yeah. I know that's long winded. So no, that was an excellent answer. No, the more information, the better. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, like Victoria, I love going straight to the source. Mm -hmm. So going on the campus and interacting with the students that go there, the professors that work there, if I see the energy is like, oh man, I hate going to class. I hate yeah. even waking up in the morning here. Um, I don't think I will be productive in that type of energy, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. But, um, and also um, I spoke to people, professionals that in the career that I'm trying to go into, um, advisors at my old school, at my in my bachelor's degree who, um, became became mentors as well mm -hmm. as going there in in the field um so i felt like they would they they gave me the raw answer not anything i was trying to hear or anything yes. like that which is what i really needed mm -hmm. you know um but definitely going on the campus of the school that you're looking for if if you are in an on-campus environment mm -hmm. um and interacting with the people that are there, um, that really gives you a perspective on how your interaction will be while you're there. Yeah, that's your good. experience, I should say. I love it, I love you wanna hear those raw answers. That's what's important. Completely agree. What advice would you guys give to other interested applicants when applying to grad school? If you could just give like it in one sentence, or maybe like a couple words, what advice would you give? I'd say like communicate and research. You wanna, commu you wanna communicate to people, like you wanna make it known what you're doing, especially like when you're going into the master's school or like you're just pursuing a graduate degree in general. Um, if you're not putting yourself out there, mm -hmm. no one's gonna know what to do to help you out. And I think with what we see with like the Common App now with undergrad, at least in my experience, 
Um, not that like I didn't ask people for help, but like it, it kind of like it did it for me. You know, mm-hmm. you submit the common app and you're like, okay, I got my acceptance letter. Yeah. Great. Um, you know, I'm going to college. Like I still talk to people, but I think in my experience, both even though I went to the same university, mm-hmm. I still like talk to the admissions team all the time. I yeah. mean, I was, you know, I was bothering people when I heard about GA positions opening up. Like I went to where those GA positions were. I talked to them before the application, like even like the interviews even started. I was like, hey, I'm interested. This is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd say like definitely communicate, never think that you're a bother and like do your homework because no one's no one's going to do it for you. And I mean, let's be honest, that's a lot of money to yeah. not do your homework and it will come back to mm-hmm. haunt you later. I know a lot of people who have picked the wrong program and dropped out. Some of them didn't even go back to master's school. Yeah. And they're like, man, I'm stuck with these loans, but like <laughs> no just degree be- to show for and it, no degree to show for it. And like they openly admit they're like, I did not look into the school enough. I just yeah. like hit a button and then it yeah, did it for me. I, I think people don't know this is a really serious, yeah. serious decision that people have to make. And just going to a school just because your friends go there like this is a not. This is not a bachelor's degree anymore. Yeah, I'm no. sorry to say, yeah. it's much more friends. serious. It has to be much more specific to what you want to do, mm-hmm. and not just just anything. It has to have a lot of thought into it, a lot of thought put into the decision. Think about what your return on investment is, your ROI. Mm-hmm. Define what that means, and do your research. It's just like whether you're like going dealership to dealership to buy a car. Or if you're going home shopping, you're trying to buy a home. I know you're going to be a lot more diligent in that. So why aren't you going to be diligent on your grad school adventure? Right. And try to apply to schools that you know will benefit you and give you the best ROI possible. Victoria, you mentioned about bombarding (laughs) the uh, (laughs) offices for... uh, Uh, So sorry. (laughs) the, the, uh, The graduate assistant positions. And don't ever be sorry about that, by the way. But um, the graduate assistant positions, can you guys just like talk about that? You guys are both GAs at your grad in your grad program. So talk about that experience a little bit. Yeah. So since I went here for undergrad, I knew about the concept of GAs Mm -hmm. um, because I lived on campus. Res Life had GAs. So I was around I was around it and I was Mm -hmm. like and then I heard about them expanding and I was like, okay, well, and you know, this is getting closer. Like I wasn't quite there, like again, like a couple semesters before I graduated uh, my undergrad, but I was like, hey, I need to start looking into this now. And I need to start, you know, I need to start preparing for this because I didn't know like how I was gonna pay for grad school. Again, like I'm a first gen student. I came to my under, like I came here on a scholarship Mm -hmm. so i really like didn't understand like the like not that i didn't understand the concept of loans because like i did and i was like terrified to take them out um but you know for master school i was like i I was like man i really don't know what i'm doing so when i heard that the ga positions were expanding i was like i'm gonna go to every office and (laughs) i'm going to bother them (laughs) i i I wasn't like i'm gonna bother them in a negative way but i was gonna introduce myself and i was gonna be like you know put myself out there Mm -hmm. um so i ended up i'm the grad or ga or graduate assistant of the library now Mm -hmm. so um i do 14 hours a week there and i remember when the i it's actually funny that my boss came into my work study job i used to work in the uh bookstore here Mm -hmm. And um, she was like, she was just talking about like, you know, like, oh yeah, like, you know, we're opening up this like GA application. It's our first time doing this. I was like, I'm interested in that. (laughs) And then I kid you not, I went into the library probably like two to three times a week at one point just to be like, hey, what's like going on with this? I submitted my application. Um, they were probably so annoyed with me, but they <laughs> but they took me. I love it there. Um, but you put your face in front of them, and that's yeah. That's... And prior to this too, if I had never lived with GAs, like if I had never had that experience, I probably wouldn't have known that existed. Yeah. Um, and like I see that more now, like not just here, but I see it also at like other universities as well. Like you know, I see them posting it, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I definitely like encourage people to take advantage of it. Look it up. Um, it's great. Yeah. And I don't know, like, do people, like, do people really know like the concept of what like a GA yeah. is? Yeah, honestly, I think 
it, 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 they may or may not. It kind of depends on like what your experience is, right? Have you seen them in your university or have you not seen them? Have you ever maybe seen them? I know sometimes they're like featured on television shows, yeah. like a graduate assistant or something like that. But um, I like the concepts of this whole GA position and understanding what it is, is also to your point, like doing your research on it. And sometimes when you're looking up different scholarships or, you know, like opportunities that students can take on while they're in their program to help with the finance aspect, then you're kind of going to probably stumble upon a GA position that's posted at the school you're looking at. But you have to do that type of stuff early on because most schools are probably going to be very competitive with their graduate assistantships. So if you really want a GA position and you want to save on the cost of your graduate program, you got to do early research, look into that, um, figure out what the process is. A lot of them like require you to have your application submitted, require you to be enrolled as a, G a graduate a student before you're able to actually take on that GA position. So early research is definitely key. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nelly, do you have any like insight on like um, advice to give? Yes, for becoming a GA, mm -hmm. um, I would say stay on it you know don't just if you see that all of the slots are filled or all of the everyone has a GA in all of the departments already you never know what's going to happen because with yeah. me I checked the the website almost at the last minute <laughs> <laughs> because I mean I checked earlier and mm -hmm. it was it was filled but I checked again right before the semester started and something opened up and I was like, it must be a sign, sign from above. <laughs> but it's a really great opportunity to do because one, it helps, yes, it helps with tuition, but it also gives you experience. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I work in the graduate admissions department. I'm giving, I'm getting business experience, how to, how to work in the office and how to interact with, with different types of people, which is, also going to help me in my career as a counselor yeah so um each ga position will give different different responsibilities which will give different outcomes yeah and you have to make it you have to make it what you need it to be right like yeah. you said you're in a counseling program now so you have to relate what you're doing in your GA position to what you want to do in the future. So that way it makes sense on your resume, right? Even if it doesn't make sense to the natural eye, you got to <laughs> make it work and right. make it blend well. Um, so we just have one last question that we really want to ask you guys. So tell us why you ultimately chose to come to Newman. Yeah, I guess I can start. Um, well, I went here for my undergrad, so I really liked it. Um, I already had a lot of connections, which really helped. Uh, but the the biggest reason I picked it was probably because I saw how immersive the program was. After speaking with like the program advisor and like the advisor I worked with my undergrad, I also knew a couple of the professors of the program prior to me even coming to Newman. Um, speaking with them and seeing how the material relates to the real like real life. Mm -hmm was very interesting to me. I didn't see that in any program I was looking at. Um, part an of, awesome field experience. Yeah, too, right? no, I, um, I I got to like, so like currently for my field experience, I'm, I'm with Citizens. I'm an intern with them. I help with their sponsorship team. I'm at uh, like about like, say like probably 60% of like the home games for the Phillies. Mm -hmm. And I never would have been able to do that without Newman, like yeah. that, that happened like I even found out about that opportunity because of Newman um you know I spoke with the program advisor about it like she knew who to talk to connected yeah. with me like connected me with my like current boss who's amazing and um I'd actually say it's like also a give and take relationship as well of like every time like I've been set up with an internship or some kind of experience with Newman it's not just like okay Newman setting you up with this mm -hmm. but also to the places I've gone to have set me up with my education as well yeah so like my field experience has like this like this experience alone with citizens has probably helped me out with like four different classes I was taking to the point where it's like you know it's involved in my capstone it's involved in my current topics in sports mm -hmm. class where like you know we're trying to address like new trends 
Um, and I never, I don't think I ever would have been like as successful if I went somewhere else because none of the programs I was looking at were as immersive. Like the professors here definitely encourage you to take a like a new look at something mm -hmm. outside of just like write this paper. And yeah. I, maybe because like I went to Newman, I already had that feel. And I definitely think like it was probably some bias. Like I'm not, I'm not going to say like it wasn't. Um, but I did see, like, you know, when I was looking at these other courses, it was like, well, there is no field experience. Yeah. There is no, like, you know, there is no, like, you go and intern somewhere. There is no guest speakers. Like, that's becoming more of a thing now, and I think that's great. But I think at the time, I was, like, you know, like, I had started that search. Only, like, a few amount of schools within the financial range I was looking at had th those opportunities. At the end of the day, I think when you're doing your graduate program, one of the main things you're going to remember is your field experience that you have or, the, like you said, those guest speakers that come in that are in the industry. So those are, that's so important. Yeah, I also chose Newman because when looking at each program I was applying to, I noticed that um, Newman's clinical mental health counseling program has a lot of experience attached to it. Um, they require internships for this program, and a lot of them don't. But actually, um, when I applied here, I actually was going to apply to the forensic psych program, mm -hmm. which goes back oh, to remember. me doing my <laughs> research <laughs> and realizing that the courses that were offered just didn't really match what I perspected. Mm -hmm. um, and coming to the campus, and I met a lot of professors when I came to the campus. And um, when I went to a lot of other campuses, yes, we met with admissions or financial aid, but we didn't really see a lot of professors to talk to the professors. Right. So I appreciated that, that Newman um, gave that opportunity for us to get a feel for our program before we even decided or started. Awesome. Well, we thank you guys for coming here and giving your advice to people that are thinking about grad school. Yeah, thank you, ladies. Yeah, really good insights. Yes, it's a great song. Yeah.